check out this amazing Christmas deal. 60 in 1 electronic project lab, not $94, just $11. Police will think you're stealing it. In fact, they're coming for me now. Just check the receipts. $90 in 2016, and seven years later, just $11 from this charity shop. And I lifted the lid. At first glance, it looks all there, all the parts. Even the crystal earpiece. Reassuringly, the wire's all wrapped up as new, so looks like it hasn't been in anyone else's ear canal before. Oh, what about the instructions? And what about all the wires that connect the springs? Hopefully they're underneath. At least some batteries are there. Oh, and there's a safety warning. Better read the obligatory safety warning. Shaking hazard, not for children under three. So, that was a bit of a blow. We thought we were getting this great bargain, but no instructions and no wires. How do we make amends for this so we can build some projects and learn about electronics like it says on the box? Getting the wires is the easy bit. Just get some thin insulated wire, chop it into various bits of uneven length, strip the ends off, tin their ends with solder, then you have a bunch of wires to join all the springs. As for the lack of instructions, you could just put things together and hope that randomly something works, but your chances of success are pretty low. Although having said that, I should mention that this kit is a little bit different from a lot of the electronic sets. A lot of the electronic sets like this were strictly electronic. They had your resistors, capacitors, transistors, LEDs, radio bits like the coil and tuning capacitor, but they didn't have much in the way of electromechanical stuff. Well, this one is a bit different. It's got a welcome diversity of parts. There's a little motor and propeller there. A coil of wire and a screw that's labelled electromagnet. A reed switch and a rather interesting adjustable resistor. Not the normal potentiometer, but it's one where you've got a clip and resistance wire. So it's going to be low resistance, high current, and this could be useful for adjusting things like motor speeds. And then there's light bulbs, a switch, a transformer, but unusually three connections for the primary, no secondary on this one transistors, resistors, there's only four capacitors in the whole lot. That could be limiting, but you could potentially add extra capacitors, maybe on little boards with springs and wires. But anyway, there's enough here to make quite a few projects. And according to the box, no less than 60 projects. Oh, and I forgot, there's a stack of magnets. Now, listen very carefully as I move them near the reed switch. it clicks. So let's wire this up in a simple circuit and prove it actually does work. Here's an interesting circuit. You might not have done this before. I've got the motor in series with a light bulb. Battery is three volts there and the adjustable resistor. Right now nothing's happening as the resistor is still open circuit. This clip is the wiper tag of the variable resistor. The resistance is at its highest value here. And when I touch that, you can see the light bulb is dimly lighting, but no action from the motor. Then 
I'll move it along. The motor starts. And the light bulb's gone. So the light bulb is passing current, but it's not enough to light it. I'll just move the wiper back to more resistance. That's slowing the motor. And it's just stopped it here. At this point, the light bulb has turned on. Now I'll just try a spot. I'll just clip it to just here. The light bulb has come on, but not enough for the motor. Now the motor requires a bit more current to start it than to keep it going. So I'll just give it a flick and it's moving. But the light bulb has us extinguished. I'll just put my fingers on the propeller, slow the motor down. And when you do that, with the motor stopped, the light brightens again. With the motor going slowly, because I'm applying resistance to it, the light is glowing. When the motor's spinning fast, the light is off. Something I should mention about these Maxitronic kits is they are pretty much a copy of the science fair kits from about the 1980s that Radio Shack Tandy sold. I managed to find a PDF of the instructions with a list of the various experiments, a bit of basics telling you what the various parts do, and you can see that it starts off with simple circuits like lighting a bulb then it gets more and more advanced so there's certainly a few simple circuits and suggestions where you can make improvements so now I have effectively a complete kit I've sorted out the wires and now have the instructions. Just making a one transistor audio oscillator. Very simple. Makes use of NPN transistor, transformer, one resistor, one capacitor, and the crystal earpiece. It works very well, both at three volts and at lower volume, 1.5 volts. With the read switch in circuit, I'll just move the magnets near it. And it works. What you're hearing is a Darlington pair two transistor radio. Very few parts and all I'm using as an antenna is a few centimeters of wire. No outside antenna, no earth. Just using a tuned circuit here as part of the electronic kit. A capacitor, one resistor, two transistors and a audio output transformer though in this case I've just got the crystal earpiece connected across the primary there's no actual secondary on this the interesting thing about it is it works a lot better with 1.5 volts than it does 3 volts there's one station I can get at a good strength in fact I can get it even when I remove the short antenna and there's other stations 
about four or five of them. You probably can't hear them, but I can hear them in the earphone. One or two of them are probably of listenable strength. I've now got the Darlington pair set loosely coupled to an outside antenna. No earth. And tuning again. And stations are much louder. That is very loud. It's almost breaking to oscillation. I'll just go up to three volts and see what happens. Something's oscillating a bit there. Just put my fingers across the transistors here. And that's taming it a bit. Now 3 volt, I don't think it's as good as 1.5. This operation at 1.5 volts means that this would be a very good candidate for a solar powered radio. Now we'll just see if we can tame this. Here we are, that's better. Here's the Darlington pair set, now connected to a piezo transducer as the speaker. If you want to build one of these independently, here's the schematic diagram for the Darlington Pair transistor radio. It uses a ferrite rod with a tap in parallel with the variable capacitor for the front end tuned circuit. A short wire antenna needs to be a short wire antenna. If you want to have a longer antenna, then you'll need to have a low value coupling capacitor here. Then the two transistors, I just used BC548s, 2N222, 2N3904, any small signal NPN type transistor will be okay. And I have the crystal earpiece in parallel with the transformer in the kit. If you have a 1K to 8 ohm transformer, you can use that. The one in the kit has a centre tap, but that's not used. Or if you don't have a transformer, you could use a resistor. Maybe 2.2K is a reasonable value. Not particularly critical. It could be 4.7. I tried that, but I got lower volume than with the transformer. So if you can use a transformer and the battery supply 1.5 volts. This is a straight TRF receiver 
so it won't be as selective or sensitive as a regenerative receiver but if you are in an area with strong signals then you'll be able to hear local stations on this and in some cases even without an antenna so worth trying if you've got a bucket of bits and you're itching to put together a simple radio couldn't resist building this one radio station just a handful of parts using the crystal earpiece as a microphone now I've got the kit set up near an AM radio I've got power applied and you adjust it until you hear the transmitter in the receiver one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That's our look at the Maxitronics 60 in 1 electronic project lab. You can still get them new, or you can be lucky like I was and find it in a charity shop. Even if the instructions not included, you can just use the instructions from the science fair kit from 30 years ago which was very similar. This is a great platform for experimenting with circuits, still a bit limited with the component values. There's not as many as you'd like, especially for the capacitors, but still there's a whole heap of projects that you can just think of and in an instant make up as a prototype and have a lot of fun optimizing it and customizing it for what you want. With these kits there's a lot of scope to build projects that aren't in the instruction manual. If you did with one of these then it'd be great to hear from you. Please just let us know what you built in the comments. Enjoy these videos? Want to start in amateur radio? Well check out my books Ham Radio Get Started for USA readers and the Australian Ham Radio Handbook for those in Australia. For more information, visit my website vk3ye.com or search their titles on Amazon.